What's going on everybody? Thanks for tuning back in. Today we're going to take a look at creating a generic Mongo controller just in case you have an application where you're creating multiple controllers and you want to refine the code so that every time you create one you don't have to keep creating the same files over and over. In this video we're going to be taking a look at reducing the number of controllers that you create. Node.js tutorial. So I'm just going to take that project, I remove the validation, and I'm going to show you how to take these two models and actually use them inside of a generic controller. So the object of this video is to get rid of the two controller files, author and book, and just replace them with one generic file. All right, guys, let's get into it. So if you take a look at the link below inside of the video description, I have a link to the project that I'm using as the base. You can go through all the files. It's just a basic Node.js Express API that just has a couple of routes for a book and author controller. So these models, the author is simply a name, and then the book is the title of a book, and then the object ID of the author. So let's go to our controllers folder and create a new file called generic.ts. I'm just gonna copy and paste from the top of my author controller, just the first function and all the imports to make this go a little bit faster and then start modifying my functions. So first let's call this one create and we're gonna create the generic create method. I'm gonna import document and model from Mongoose as well as the default import. Now the syntax on this part might get a little weird for you, but what I'm doing basically is having this create function point to a function or a piece of middleware. When I use notation like this, it's for when things like the router automatically injecting the request, response, and next functions into it for you. So the only way to pass in variables is to notate your function like this. You'll see what I mean when we go back to the routes and modify them. Inside of the function, we want to call for a model and inside of the model type, we're just going to pass in any into the chevrons for now. It's a little bit hacky, but this is the best way to get the generic controller working. We can get rid of the request.body and we can just go ahead and console log that we're creating a new document for. And then to get the actual model name that we're using here, you could just call model.model name and this will be injected for you. Now, instead of a const author equals new author, we're just gonna call this a const doc or a const document, whatever you wanna call it. And this is gonna be equal to a new model. Now, the ID is still going to be the same as all IDs are generated this way, but all you're gonna do in here is inject using the spread operator, your request.body, and we're gonna assume that any request that comes in, the body has all the parameters that you would need. Next, we're gonna return the doc.save. And then inside of our result, I'm just gonna make this of type any, this is the only place in this document that you're going to have to do this. And I'm going to make the error of type any as well. And inside of the returning JSON for the success, I'm just going to pass in the result. And then for the error, I'm going to pass in the error. This is all we need for our create model. At the bottom, go ahead and export default and then add the create function here. This is how we're going to export all of our functions to be called inside of our routes. Next, let's copy and paste our create function rename this to get all and create our get all function. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to modify our logging statement here, just to say we're getting all of the documents. We're going to get rid of this const doc equals new model. We don't need this part anymore. All we really need to do is search the actual model itself. So how we're going to do that is we're going to call model dot find like we would on any normal model inside of the chevrons. We're going to pass in our document and that's because all of our interfaces are based off this document class. Then we're gonna take our results and we're gonna return them inside of some JSON. First, we're gonna log them. And then you can return them with a status of 200 and just pass this into the JSON if you want. You can return this any which way you please. For our catch block, we're gonna do the same thing with our error. What we're gonna do is we're gonna log it first. And then we're gonna return it with a status of 500 and we're going to pass in the error inside of the JSON the same way we did with the results. This is all we really need for our get all function. So far, so good. Now, some Mongo models, you may want to return some populated fields. For example, for our book, we may want to have all of our books returned, but with the authors as well. So we have to populate the author field. How we do that dynamically is we can actually pass in another parameter called populate, give it the question mark so it's optional and make this of type string array. 
And then after the find, you could do a dot populate, and then you could pass in this variable or have a call an empty array. That way, if there is something inside the populate variable, it's gonna try and fill it out for us. This is gonna make it easy when we declare our routes where we can just pass in what we want this to populate for us. Go ahead and copy and paste the get all function and rename it to get. Modify the console log statement like we've been doing. You could just say getting document from by ID. Now get the ID from the parameters and we're gonna just call this our request.params.id. We're gonna change the find to a find one and then we're gonna pass in our underscore ID as ID. Inside of the then block, we're gonna change our results to result and we're gonna to check to see if it actually exists. So if it does, just return the JSON as normal. And then if it doesn't, what you can do is you can log and say that it's not found and then end up returning something like a 404 with a message that says not found. You should log this in the console as well. And that's all we need to do for the get model. Now to keep this simple, let's do one more controller and call it the update function. Inside of the if the result is returned to be true, what we can do is do a result.set and set this to our request.body, assuming that we have data validation and that the body has only parameters used by this model. And then we can return the result.save. And then similar to the create block, just return the result if in fact the result exists. And just like that, we have all four of our functions ready to go. Don't forget to go back to the bottom and export them with the create function like we did earlier. And that should be that. So now we can actually go to our routes and we can actually start modifying these files to use our generic controller. So first let's start off and actually go over to our author route file. This is where we're gonna make the modifications. So go ahead and replace the controller to the generic and then import a model from our model file, which is also going to just be from our models author file. Next, what we're gonna do is change this controller to a controller.create and then we're gonna pass in the model. So you'll notice that Express automatically injects the other function, the request, the response, and the next function for you. All we have to do is pass in the model and the optional populate if we want it. Pass in your get slash ID and make that equal to the get model. And then change the get all function to the get all and pass in the model. And then finally, we're gonna do the router.patch. We're gonna do a forward slash update slash ID. Make sure you have the colon in front of the ID and change this to the controller update model. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and test this. I'm gonna test this in a program called Postman or Postmon as I call it sometimes. I'm gonna type in a get request here to my local host. And if everything is working properly, the author route that I type in should work properly. So let's do a get all. And I made a small mistake here. So let's just go back and fix that. And what happened was I put the get all route after the get ID route. So it's picking up the word all as an ID. So put the all in front. And then when we hit get all, we can see that it returns our list for us, which is empty right now. So let's go ahead and insert a new author. We're gonna call the post authors create route. And I'm just gonna pass in a name here, let's call it Jimmy Falling. And then when I hit the send button, you can see that it is created properly for me. So now this author's routes is using my generic controller. It's not using that author controller anymore. So again, this is important because if you have 15 controllers that all look the same, you could just create a generic one for them this way through TypeScript. So that way you can ensure that everything is working properly. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the book route as well. So I'm gonna need this ID when I create my new book. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the book routes. And before I do that, actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete my author controller because I don't need it anymore. And you might as well just delete the book one too because these are gonna look very similar. And now in the book routes, we're going to change the controller to the generic controller and import the book model. And then you can just copy and paste everything from the author routes into the book routes because they're going to be the same.
So first things first, if I do a books get all, we should see that there are no books in the database yet. So make sure you have that ID that you copied from before and go ahead and create a book with a title and an author. So you can see that everything is working as it should be. So just like that, we've created a generic controller for basic Mongo routing that pretty much any project would need. If you have specific routes for, that you want to create, then you should create your own controller file for that. But everything else, you should just keep generic just to keep everything very clean. Go ahead and try and figure out how to do the routes on your own as well. And if there's enough requests for it, I can show you how to do dynamic routing as well. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning back in. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're feeling real generous, you can buy me a coffee to see more videos. Okay, guys, take it easy.